so here we have another type of question that is short answer 1 this comes in section b for two marks each carry each question carry two marks so here we will start our first question is why and where are eddy current are undesirable how are they minimized so what we know about eddy current that resistance of the thick conductor is quite low therefore eddy current are generally quite large in magnitude and produces considerable heating effect in accordance with joule's law of heating production so to minimize this undesirable ad current as ad current produce a large amount of heat this heating effect of ad current is undesirable in number of cases like dyno transformer etc where the coil is wound on a iron core the heating effect of ad current is used to make induction furnace so due to this heating effect what we can do we can use that concept to make induction furnace and it also have breaking effect ad current also have breaking effect which is undesirable in many cases so we can use this breaking effect of ad current in electric brake and ballistic galvanometer so in by using in a such a way we can reduce or minimize ad current now we will move to our next question now this page look quite it's not looking good i'll read it you just concentrate on audio so what is our first uh, second question define self inductance and mutual inductance what do we have to find self and mutual inductance so first of all we will try to de define self inductance the self inductance of a circuit is ratio of magnetic flux produced due to current in the circuit linked with the circuit to the current flowing in it what is self mag uh, inductance the ratio of magnetic flux linked with the circuit to the current flowing in it where phi is magnetic flux and i is current similarly the mutual inductance is defined as the mutual inductance of two circuit is equal to magnetic flux linked with one circuit per unit current in other circuit so here you will find m stand for mutual inductance capital m stand for mutual inductance so what is that magnetic flux linked with linked with circuit one circuit per unit current in other circuit so here phi to one magnetic flux in second coil due to first coil divided by current in a first coil or else magnetic flux in first coil due to second coil and current in second coil the third question is explain why inductance of two coils connected in parallel is less than inductance of either coil so here we have to show when we will connect inductance in a parallel the answer of that parallel inductance will be less than individual so here what we have to do first of all we have to consider the conduct uh, inductors in a parallel combination so when they are in parallel combination and the total current flowing through that i then i1 will be current flowing through first conduct uh, inductor and i2 will be current flowing through second inductor that is l1 and l2 then total current will be given by i is equal to total current will be given by i is equal to i1 plus i2 
so we can check rate of current so that is di by dt then it will be equal to di1 plus dt uh, di1 divided by dt plus di2 divided by dt then here we have considered two coils so there will be the emf induced in each coil and the combination of that induced emf will be same so let lp be the equivalent inductance l stand for inductance p stand for parallel so what we can say induced emf is equal to minus of lp rate of change of current that is di by dt and from here you will get di by dt is equal to minus epsilon by lp that is induced emf by parallel inductance and similarly we will calculate for this first term and second term that is if mutual inductance between the two coil is taken to be negligible then induced emf will be minus l1 di1 by dt or from this term di1 by dt is equal to minus epsilon l1 and similarly we will get for second and from this four equation that is 1 2 3 4 we can substitute 2 3 4 in first equation so what we will get minus epsilon by lp is equal to minus epsilon by l1 minus epsilon by l2 so here minus minus will going to be common and this minus and that minus will going to be cancel then you will get 1 by lp and this epsilon will also going to be cancel then you will get 1 by lp is equal to 1 by l1 plus 1 by l2 when we will do cross multiplication and then we will reverse it we will get lp is equal to l1 l2 by l1 plus l2 so from this we will get the value of this lp will be less than inductance of each coil our next question is an emf of 96 millivolt so emf means e is given 96 millivolt is induced in the winding of coil when current in a nearby coil is in increasing at the rate of 1.2 ampere per second what we have to calculate mutual inductance of two coil what they have given e is equal to 96 millivolt so milli is nothing but 10 to the power minus 3 volt so di by dt that is what rate of change of current 1.2 ampere per second what do we have to calculate mutual inductance so mutual inductance will be given by m is equal to here we will consider only the magnitude term that's why this modulus sign is here e by di by dt e we have di by dt we have when we will do that 12 eights are 96 so here 1 point so 80 into 10 to the power minus 3 so mutual inductance will be 80 milli henry okay so mutual inductance of coil is 80 milli henry and this is a textbook unsolved example 13 on page number 286 287 so here we have our another question again it is numerical from section b calculate induced emf between end of axle of a railway carriage 1.75 meter long traveling on a level ground with a uniform velocity 50 km per hour the vertical component of earth magnetic field is given that is bv is 5 into 10 to the power minus 5 tesla So this is textbook unsolved example number eleven from page number two eight seven. So length is given one point seven five meter. Vertical component of magnetic field is given five into ten to the power minus five tesla, and v is given. There is velocity fifty kilometer per hour. So when we want to convert the kilometer per hour to the meter per second, we are going to multiply by five by eighteen. what we have to calculate induced emf between the end of axle so we have to calculate induced emf that is denoted by e so e is equal to blv 
B. Vertical component of magnetic field. L. Length of the railway carriage. And V is velocity of that train. So here, when you will substitute, you will get 1.22 millivolt. 1.22 millivolt. The next question, question number six, the magnetic flux through a loop varies according to the relation phi is equal to 8t square plus 6t plus 2. So here they have given the quadratic equation of magnetic flux, how they are varying. So where phi is in milliweber, so the quantity, the magnitude of this is in milliweber and T is in second. What is magnitude of induced EMF in loop at T is equal to 2 seconds? So when the time will be 2 seconds, what will be the induced EMF in that circular coil? Phi is given 8T square plus 6T plus 2 and T is given at 2 seconds. What we have to calculate? magnitude of induced EMF that is E. So here we will only consider the magnitude. So here we are not going to consider negative sign. So E is equal to d phi by dt. So phi is already given 8t square plus 6t plus 2. So when we will substitute this we will get this relation. So derivative of this derivative term will going to be separate for each term like this. So derivative of 8t square plus derivative of 6t plus derivative of 2. So derivative of 8t square is nothing but 8 into 2t plus derivative of 6t is nothing but 6 will be constant so derivative of t is 1 and derivative of 2, 2 is constant so derivative of 2 is 0. So what we will get? 16t plus 6 but when we have to calculate magnitude when t is equal to 2 seconds so we will substitute t is equal to 2 seconds what we will get magnitude of induced emf is equal to 16 into 2 plus 6 16 to the 32 plus 6 38 millivolt so this is magnitude of induced emf that is 38 into 10 to the power minus 3 volt now last question from this section distinguish between step up and step down transformer transformer so here we have to define the term if you will learn this if you will only learn this question also distinguish so if there will be question on based on uh, step up you can write if the question will be based on step down you can write so by using this only you you will get uh, uh, three or four type of questions so here we will write first of all step up and uh, step transformer and step down transformer. First of all we have to discuss about uh, number of turns. So number of turns in secondary coil is more than its primary coil. So in step up secondary coil will be maximum. Number of turns in secondary coil will be maximum. And in that case of uh, step down, so here primary will going to be maximum number of turns in primary is greater than secondary coil that is NP is greater than NS. Then second point is related to induced EMF. So alternating voltage across the end of secondary is more than uh, that across the primary that is ES is greater than EP. And in case of step down, alternating voltage across end of the primary is more than across the secondary that is EP is greater than ES. Transformer ratio K is greater than 1 in step up and it is less than 1 in step down. Primary coil made of thick wire in step up and in step down secondary coil is made up of thick wire. So here we have primary. So how to remember this? Whose number will be less that will be made by thick wire. In secondary coil 
it is made by thin wire in step up and in step down transformer it is primary coil is made up of thin wire and the last point current through secondary coil is less than primary okay current through secondary coil is less than primary that is ip is greater than is or we can say current through secondary coil that is 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 less than ip so you can write in both the way and similarly this one current through primary is less than secondary current through primary is less than secondary so here we have ended with two marks of questions